Okay, in this tutorial, I'm gonna break this image down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine, so that you can follow along, create this image, and amaze yourself. Okay, so as I explained in the intro, I'm gonna break this down into steps so that you learn not only the painting process and techniques, but also about the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say that you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. Having said that, within the app, Procreate, I'm using their default A4 canvas, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 DPI. And in terms of the color profile, I'm using the sRGB code that is on the list of options on Procreate, and it's the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes, I'm going to be using the soft brush with an airbrushing, probably the medium brush within airbrushing. Within the elements brushes, I'm gonna use the clouds brush. Within luminance, I might use the light pen. Within organic, I might use the rainforest brush. In terms of the colors, I've already chosen a color palette suitable for this image. And each of these colors, if you go to the value section, has a hexadecimal code associated with it. Each of these codes is down in the video description. You just need to copy and paste them into this box, press enter, the color will appear in this top corner, and then you can tap it into your own created color palette. Or next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page, where you can download it for free to save you some time. And my Patreon page is also the place where you can support this channel, gain access to exclusive content like extended versions of these tutorials and other things. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who have supported me. It really does make a huge difference and it's much appreciated. Thank you so much. And with all of that said and done, we're gonna get started. So the first thing we're going to do on our A4 canvas is we're gonna to go to our colors, first color on the top row, drag it from the color circle into the canvas and let go. And that's just gonna have created a nice blue background, gets rid of that intimidating white color. And then gonna to go to my brushes, the airbrushing soft brush, I'm going to go to the colors. I'm going to choose the second color on the top row. I'm going to put it up to about 30% size, 100% opacity, and then just right through the center of this canvas, do a band of that. Then I'm going to go straight to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in pretty significantly to about the 70%, and then deselect. Okay, I'm going to create a new layer, layer two, and I'm going to tap on the little N visible on the layer. That takes us to the different blend modes. I'm gonna scroll down to add. And you'll notice the little N changes to an A. I'm gonna use the soft brush with an airbrushing still. And I am gonna use that second color on the top row again, but I'm gonna put it down to maybe 20% size and really very significantly low at only 2% opacity. And I'm just gonna put a few taps of this where we envisage the sun to be and just circle them in. And then I'm just going to do a couple of bands that cut across as well. Maybe just an extra wide, a few versions of that, and another one for good measure. And that's just going to add a little bit more luminosity. I'm going to go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur that in to about 10%, just to soften it in, just to ramp some of the light up in that scene. And that's just helping to lift it a little bit. So I'm going to create a new layer, layer three. I'm going to keep the blend mode this time on normal, so don't touch that. I'm gonna to go to the third color on the top row. I'm gonna to go to the brushes. I'm gonna use the elements clouds brush and I'm gonna put the size at 6% and we'll put the opacity maybe at around 50%. And I'm gonna avoid just this center area initially, but in and around that, we're going to add some, just some round shapes and you can go over it a few times. Now it is pressure sensitive so you can press lightly and you won't get anything too dramatic. But then if you press harder, the shapes just appear a bit more vivid. So I'm just circling these in. I'm gonna have some sections that jut up and out as larger formations and shapes. Maybe have a nice section up here. Maybe it comes and joins in here. And just this circular motion, I think helps get a really nice effect. We can have some little shapes that are just out on their own as well. Let's just band these together a little bit more over on this side. Again, that circular motion. And then we're going to do the similar over here. So I'm going to have this as a really nice big bulk item up here at the top. And then just start to think about the edges. So we're going to have some little 
round shapes that just stick out. Just create an irregular kind of edge, really. That's what we're after. And then I'm going to do some stretched out shapes as it gets near the bottom a little bit. You don't need to worry about that center area too much. We are going to go over that with some lighter colors predominantly. And then maybe just reduce it down now from 6 to 3% size. And again, we can just do some little parts here, just articulate them a little bit more finely. And they can begin to encroach in this area, but we're not going to make a big impact in that center area. And then we can just do a few taps of this in this lower area, some slightly more fragmented clouds down here, but not much. Okay, so we're going to go to our layers and create a new layer, layer four, go back to our colors, and we're going to use the fourth color, stay on the same brush, we're going to put it back up to maybe 5%, maybe 50% is a little bit intense, so we're going to go for 40, then we're going to start circling in some shapes, so they're like the shadow part of this cloud, and even at 40% it's a little bit strong, so let's put it down to 30 I'll zoom in a little bit, and again, we're creating circular shapes. Now, focusing initially over at this side, because it is going to be away from the actual sun, or further away anyway, so you expect to see some more of these dark colours creeping in. Now, once we've got a kind of main body of shadow in here, for example, as we get towards the edge, we might want to turn it down from 5 to 3, and then create separate shapes that don't quite connect so we leave like a gap and I'll exaggerate that point just so you can see clearly what I'm trying to communicate. So we're creating separation in some of these shapes. Now that's too strong. We want it much more subtle than that. So I'll just delete those. And some of them may join up, but either way, you're getting layers and separation with a gap that kind of runs through in and among some of these areas. And we'll continue sort of building it towards this direction. And we might want to turn the opacity down even further. So maybe, well, we'll try 15%. And it is pressure sensitive again. So if you press harder, which I am doing now, then you're still going to achieve some of those darker tones. But we want it to increasingly get more subtle as it goes towards the sun. And let's move over to the other side. Again, maybe put this back up. 5% size, 30% opacity. Let's build some of this in. Again, maybe stick with the circular motions. If you do start to see any of the brush marks still remaining then it's better if they're slightly circular it just blends in better with the kind of subject matter now it's still a little bit dark so we're going to go to our colors and maybe go along to the fifth color and this color is going to be a real nice bridge between that darker blue and then just some warmer hues as we connect more towards the central area so i'll zoom in a bit more and again we're just keep keeping these separation different shapes different areas and again, we could turn it down to maybe even 2% as we get towards this edge. We just want to further articulate it a bit more clearly. And then as we move away from the edge, more towards this area over here, we could put it back up 5%. And then we can just start to allow it to blend in with that darker color a bit more. Soften it back, subdue it. It's quite nice to have that as an underpinning basis to work from, but then we can just, yeah, reduce its impact a little bit. And let's move over to this side. We're going to do very similar. Again, this is a larger size, so we can use this predominantly over on this edge. And we get into bulkier parts anyway, but then turn it back down 3% as we encroach more towards that central area. Go almost up to the very edge, but we're preserving like a, a an actual edge that is going to be lighter colours. So you get very close to it sometimes, but not completely. Okay, and just I'm being very light now with the pressure. So it is more subtle. Maybe I could turn it down even more from the three to the two percent. And again, just get it in and out of some of these shapes. Keep building them up. There's a section over here we've neglected a little bit, so we can go back into there, create some more of these shapes. And they're not, you know, they're not something that needs to be really finely tuned. We're going to add some brighter colors, which really will bring out this effect more dramatically. So for now, we're just 
for scribbling it in. It's not particularly labored over or cared for. It's just, yeah, getting them in initially. And then for this lower area, perhaps we could put it to 3% and just start to flatten it out towards the bottom edge. Just do bands that cut across and similar over here. Now you could have it slightly fragmented so it goes in bits here and then the longer section over here perhaps, whatever works. Perhaps we'll go back to the fourth color, 6%, still at 30% opacity. And yeah, maybe we could just restate some of the darker areas if we wanted. Quite nice not to totally lose that dark area. Now what I will do with that whole layer is go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and just blur it in a bit because it's a little bit too textured when you actually look at it close up and put now it's softened it in, which is better. I'm gonna go to my layers and create a new layer, layer five. I'm gonna go to the little N, tap on it, scroll down to the add blend mode once again. And we're gonna to go to the airbrushing soft brush. We're gonna put it down to the lowest part of 2% size and only 2% opacity. Now it's really subtle and we can build it up gradually. I'm just going over some of these areas and just allowing it to ramp up the kind of glow and the effect of that. Maybe we could put it up from two to five. Depends how you prefer to work. So I'm gonna go for five and then really low, at the lowest part of 2%, just before it turns into one. And then I'm just gonna trace around some of these edges. The sun is gonna be in the central area. So that means that anything that's along an edge, kind of immediately facing it or cutting closer to it, is gonna be highlighted around the edge in a really distinct and kind of vivid way. Really nice contrast. So go around some of those edges, use it to articulate more kind of round, fluffy cloud shapes in a really nice way. And we'll do it up here as well. We can have some shapes that just stick out on their own as well. Again, use this as a further way of articulating some of these different layers and edges. We should have some gaps between the dark areas that we've already created. And in some cases, you can just trace around some of those gaps. We won't do it there so much. We're just concentrating on that edge predominantly. In fact, I think even along that edge is probably too much. Keep it for the areas that are immediately kind of facing the sun. And then we can move that over here. And then we can just go around this edge maybe even down into the 1%, really small. Just go around. It's probably a good thing you have to press on a few times to really bring out some of these edges. It means you have to be really determined to make a section look brighter, which I think sometimes works better. And then down in this lower section, we can just introduce some streaks that cut through. Maybe just, if you've got a large band of this tone, you can just divide it up into smaller sections too. And bring some of these streaks more into the central area where the sun will be. Like so, and then we'll do the same over here. Maybe put it up from 1% to 5%. And then again, just a nice band of this that cuts across. Really gonna help sort of blend that in a little bit more. Just a few streaks of that will work. I'm going to create a new layer and again, change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm gonna go to my white color, use the medium brush with an airbrushing. And I'm gonna put the size to, well, you can visualize it. So maybe about 5%, you can see it will roughly work. 100% opacity. Then in this center areas, do a small circle like that, tap it a few times. And I'm gonna change from the white to the yellow. I'm gonna put the brush size to, well, we should probably change the soft brush in fact. Change the brush size to something bigger, maybe 15%, 5% opacity. Tap that in a few times, so it just creates a really nice golden glow around that sun. Change to the red at the end, the 10th color. Put it up to 30% size and maybe down to 3% opacity. And then we can just really start to blend these in a bit more, tap it in a few times, just keep, move it around a little bit. 
you can see it's really binding them together in a nice sort of glow that really works like so. Then I'm going to go back to the yellow. I'm going to reduce the size of that brush to the lowest part at 2%, put it up to maybe 10% opacity. And then I'm just going to start going in here now and creating some slight more articulation where the sun is actually highlighting the edges of some of these clouds as it gets really close to the sun. Perhaps 10% is going to be a little bit strong, maybe down. Well, we could stay with the 5% in fact, and let's put it down to 1%, just into the 1%. We can really fine tune that then, really be precise when we get close to the sun. We can have a few breakaway little tufts. If we've already got them, just go around the edges of them with this brighter colour. Further enhance some of these edges, even as we get further away. The impact of the sun is going to be pretty strong, but you can see in this environment it's a very strong light. Again, don't forget some of these little breakaway particle bits of cloud. They can be really effective too. Just try and don't make the edges too neat either. Try and rough them up a little bit. We don't want too much of a, a really nice neat curve that goes around them. We want them to be a bit more textured than that. And then I guess we're going to see the impact of it even over at the far side a little bit, but maybe less obviously. Just a hint of it more in some places. But really, it's towards the sun that we're going to have a stronger impact. And we can add it to some of these lower areas too. Now some of these lines look a bit too distinct. You can always go to something like the smudge, put that on the soft brush within airbrushing. I don't know, 3% size or so, 30% opacity. And you could always just smudge them in a little bit if they're becoming too distinct, break them up, create a slight more sense of randomness in that area. Okay, I'm gonna go back to layer four and create a new layer above that. So layer seven is now down underneath layer five and six going to go to my brushes. I'm going to use the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to go back to the first color on the top row and I'm going to put my brush size at 2% and 100% opacity. And then I'm going to aim for somewhere just around here that can distance away from the sun. And if you're not quite sure how to do it, just do a line from one side to the other, hold it until it snaps to a straight line, then you can move it around. And to get it completely horizontal, well, we can take it somewhere where clearly isn't horizontal, put a finger on the screen while still holding the Apple Pencil down, and then it snaps to a perfectly horizontal line. And then I'm going to drag from that colour circle in the corner into the remaining area. Now, I've not let go of the Apple Pencil. You can see it's flood filled it too much, but all I need to do is slide it backwards that way a little bit. And you can see the blue line slider. You can either go further or you can go backwards. Now, because we use the soft brush, there is a little gap there because the edge of it is soft, so it doesn't fill it all the way. So if you want to, if it's going to bother you, you can just go in and fill that. That's a problem. Then I'm going to go tap on that layer, put on the alpha lock. Then still with the soft brush, with an airbrushing, I'm going to go to the first color on the middle row. I'm going to put the brush size to 20% and 100% opacity. And I'm just going to fill in this bottom area. In fact, we'll take it up just slightly higher than halfway, maybe about two thirds of the way up. Then we'll go to the adjustments, the Gaussian blur, and we'll blur that in to about the 50% and deselect. And you can see it's just created a nice gradient now in that bottom section. I'm then gonna to go to the eraser on the soft brush with an airbrushing. I'm gonna put it down to just into the 2% size and 20% opacity. And then I'm just gonna rotate it just so you I can easily access the whole stretch. And then I'm just going to do some bands of this and hold it again at the other side. And you can see it snaps to a nice horizontal line. But you don't need to do every single pass of that completely perfect. I just did the first one. And then in that center area, I'm just going to erase that hard edge a little bit more. And then as it gets further away, I don't mind if it kind of remains a little bit sharper. But certainly in the center area, 
I just want to soften in the impact and maybe bring that eraser down a little bit too, like that. I might continue to take it away from the edge as well, in fact, just a little bit more, soften it in. Then I'm going to put the brush size up to 5% and just do a pass of that across. And I don't mind if it starts to be uneven because the land and the landscape is not going to conform to strictly completely neat horizontal lines. So this is ideal. Then we go up to 10% and then reduce the opacity down to 10% as well. And then down in this section, I'll just do another pass of this. Maybe just do a couple of passes of that as well. And now we've created a slight sense of more undulations in the landscape. And that I think works better. I'm going to stay on the same layer, but I'm going to change the razor to the elements clouds brush. It's just a little bit more textured and we're going to turn the size down to 2% and the strength down to about 50%. And then in these distant areas, we're just going to create some sections, perhaps where there's water and different kind of patches. And we're going to do like a main river that cuts through as well, but just in kind of horizontal bands that cut across. It could be a whole river network perhaps. So I'm just letting it build up initially. Do a few horizontal or horizontal-ish kind of bands that cut through this scene. Then I'm just going to put it up to maybe 80%. And we're going to start just really getting this a little bit more pronounced. We're just creating like the negatives here. So this is now when we're creating these light areas, this is actually the sky reflecting in water. Again, we can just keep running bands of this across. And we have underneath this layer, a nice bright color, which is suitable enough to reflect the sky. We're gonna add more highlights immediately in this area, but for the most part, actually, what we're revealing underneath this is going to be suitable for the kind of water reflection. Now, as we start to get two areas that are removed like this, we're going to reveal a bit of land that sticks out. And this is the effect that we're going for. So we can create channels that cut in and then back into the main river area. And then you can create another section that maybe juts out. So rather than positively adding the land in, we're actually just chiseling away, removing bits of the land where the water is creeping in. Now, don't worry too much if the way that you've removed this is not you know, 100% what you're after. We'll just get them the general sense of it in initially. So I'm going to bring the kind of the river down in this area, not so much on this side. So let's increase the size up to maybe 5%. And then we can remove more bulk areas. So big section down here. I'm probably going to darken this up a little bit at some point, but just remove it initially. Just circle it in to remove it. What we could probably do with the layer is go back to it, tap on it and turn off the alpha lock, which means we could go to the smudge tool, put it on elements clouds brush as well, maybe 3% size, 100% opacity. And then if you wanted to just push some of these land features, you don't, you weren't entirely happy with the shape. Well, you can push and further sculpt these areas with the smudge tool as well. So you can positively kind of push it around add to those shapes or you can go back to the eraser still set to the same settings we're using it at and well we can remove sections of it too i will put that back down to a small size though maybe two percent but we're just aiming for bits of land that cut in and then almost like a river that kind of zigzags through to an extent so just take a little time try to get some shapes that you like there's no right and wrong for these shapes just aim for something that you think looks you know pleasing now it's a little bit rough at first and it's going to be a little bit difficult to see exactly how it's working, but the effect will start to build up more dramatically the more we do and start to make more sense. And then maybe turn the opacity down back to sort of 50% or so. And again, we can just add more sections back here that have been removed maybe, sort of river systems, channels of water that just cut through. Maybe another section over here. Might be obscured by other things, but it doesn't really matter.
put it back to 100% opacity. Just get rid of any of these little bits that are going to be in the center of the water. We obviously want this to be nice and clear. We can add textures to the water, but we don't want these scruffy areas to remain. Perhaps I'll put the size up to 5 6% again. Remove some of this. I think to create this true effect, I'm going to go back to layer one, go back in with the airbrushing soft brush, and I'm going to go to a darker, more subdued color. So perhaps the fourth color on the top row, 15% size, 10% opacity. And well, we can just start to add some of this darker tone here, just down in the lower areas. Just to darken it up down here i think it makes more sense of the scene maybe put it up now to 20 percent opacity and just continue to darken this up in this lower area back to our colors maybe the first color on the middle row and then just a band or two of that across the lower area just to really kind of bring it all together a bit better not too much we don't want it the same color as the land. I think that makes more sense. Go back up to layer seven and continue to refine. So we were using the eraser, clouds brush. I'm gonna put it down to the 2% size, 100% opacity, and just refine some of the areas that we're actually removing. So we are at the same time concentrating on the shapes that we're actually creating in water, but then you also have to bear in mind some of the shapes that you've left over. So you have to think about it in terms of these are bits of land remaining in the water. So you need to simultaneously kind of imagine that these are stretches of water, but then also look at the darker sections and think, do they work? Do they look like bits of land at the edge of water? And if they don't, then you need to just perhaps just concentrate them, concentrate your mind thinking about them as bits of land instead of concentrating on the water that you're creating. And if you need to, like I was saying, go back to the smudge tool, same settings we were on before, and you can use that now to extend bits of the land, sculpt it a little bit more from the edges. Back to the eraser. And the lines are going to be much more horizontal as they get further up towards the horizon line. It's okay if they kind of go at angles down here, but as they get closer up here to that horizon line, they need to be just flatter shapes that are more straight lines conforming to that horizontal line, really. It's going to make some of these water areas a little bit crisper and clearer. Okay, I'm going to go and create another layer above layer 7, but crucially still underneath layer 5 and layer 6, so this is layer 8. I'm going to go to the second color on the middle row. I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. Now I'm going to reset it and then I'm going to show you how I've amended it. So tap on it and put the spacing from 27 to 60 percent and that's it. I'm going to put the size of the brush down to 2 percent and the opacity at around 70 percent and then we're going to imagine that these areas are just populated with trees with greenery for the most part and then in this lower area we're really going to see the nice contrast between the darker land color and the highlights affecting the, the top of the trees from the sun now i'm going to keep it a little bit patchy so we've got some layers we still want to keep some of the darker patchier areas showing through but we can certainly add this as a texture on top maybe we could turn the brush size down from two or maybe just into the lower part of 2% and we can get a little bit more refined. This is also a brush that if you press on more, it gets bigger shapes. Press on more lightly, you get smaller. So you can use both of those techniques to your advantage. Smaller size, maybe down into the, even the 1%, but you can also press on more. And we're just creating these nice tree textures here. And then we can start to push that further back as well. Now it is generally a color that's going to kind of disappear 
once the blue starts getting lighter, you're not going to notice the green as much. In fact, we'll use a lighter green in a moment, but we don't want it too distinct anyway. We'll go down to this area. We're perhaps going to have some areas that maybe are more in shadow. So let's just preference, concentrate on this area maybe over in this section. I'm just tapping it in pretty loosely. I'm generally doing like a sideways shape like that, but I'm adding it pretty quick. Now I've just put it up to 100% that's actually an acceptable percentage because I'm only lightly kind of grazing the surface. Maybe we could put it up again into the 2% and then it's gonna disappear up into the lighter areas anyway. Put it back down again, in fact, to the 70% opacity, still at the 2% size. And I think I'm just gonna add a little bit more into some of these areas. As we get closer down here, we're going to notice the trees a little bit more distinctly. Okay, I'm going to go back to my colours. I'm going to choose the ninth colour on the middle row. And we're going to use that just a little bit in these slightly more foreground areas, not too much. It's quite a vibrant green. So we only want this to just kind of be hinted at in these slightly closer areas, but not too much. Important not to get carried away with vivid colours that are still kind of representing quite a distant area still. But a little bit more brightness and warmth here compared to back there is fine. I'm going to go perhaps to a really nice warm colour. So I'll go for the second colour on the top row. Put it down lower on the 2% size and maybe only about 50% opacity. And then as we come up here, we can just have this lighter colour in the mix too. Maybe we're even lower than 50. Let's put it down to 30. And then some of these tree textures can just become a lighter colour. As we head some more towards the light anyway, then they should blend in with the, the general lighting up in this area. Just doing it as kind of textures that's patchy. I want there to be gaps. I want it to look kind of rough generally sweeping my hand across in a horizontal movement and at the same time just keeping the kind of patchiness up as well and it just pushes the effects of some of this texture back into the, the landscape and it's really quite effective it's not particularly difficult to do at all but it really does do the trick it creates a really nice illusion of the texture going all the way back in our landscape and you can see the effect, it really just does push that further back. And we'll do the same or something very similar over here. As we get more towards the centre, perhaps more of this light tone. Anyway, even in these sections that are quite close to us. Not too much of it though, because it is going to stand out quite distinctly. You can just add a hint of it maybe in there, but really we're using this light tone just in the kind of further back sections. We'll go back to the second color on the middle row. And yeah, if we just need to add a bit more of this, we need to put the percentage up though. So maybe up to 80% or so. And the gaps between the highlights and the shadows are going to become more distinct as we get closer to us. So you get bigger shadow areas compared to up there. Okay, that will do for that initial texture. Again, go back to layer seven at this point with the eraser, maybe put the eraser on something more clean like the airbrushing medium brush. 2% size, 100% opacity. If there's any textures now around the, the coastline, if you like, or the river bank, however you want to perceive it, then you can just go in there and just clean and tidy that up if there's anything that you're not quite happy with. Okay, so that's creating a really nice sense of texture and distance in this landscape. We're gonna go straight to the top layer now and create a new layer. And we're gonna change the blend mode from normal to add. I'm then gonna go to the airbrushing soft brush. I'm going to choose the red orange color, the last color on the top row. I'm going to put it to maybe about 2% size, 
5% opacity and I'm just going to go down into the water that is immediately underneath the sun and in this whole area we're just going to start building up more of that luminous light reflection that naturally would be there in the water. So we'll just start off softly with the soft brush. You can tap it in, you can do dashes, sideways, whatever suits really. And it doesn't matter if it goes over some of the land to a point, we would expect bleaching out of the details anyway. We'll just try to stick to the water as much as possible. Try not to overlap the land, but if it does a little bit, it doesn't really matter too much. Bring it down to maybe about halfway, about here, and then it can start to just sort of disappear a little bit. Maybe just a little bit more directly underneath the sun, but not too much. We're going to think about the reflection being predominantly in this section. A few bands across like that. Then we'll go back up here, maybe turn the size of the brush down even further, lower on the 2%. Then we can really just focus in a little bit more into this area. And then even further down to the 1%, let's zoom in a bit more, and then we can just start really fine tuning. So there's little kind of river water sections up here as well. Extend this sideways a little bit in places too. Bear in mind, we have some light things that are just reflecting from the sky as well. If you've got light up here, for example, might just creep down into the water there a little bit, but obviously the main event is the sun. And let's just try and focus our attention to immediately underneath. It's a very gradual percentage, so you can't really go too far wrong with this. I always recommend you use it at the lower percentage just for this reason. Then I'm going to change brush. I'm going to go to the luminance light pen. I'm going to stay with the same color, but we're going to put it to maybe 15% size, 30% strength, and then zoom in. And we're just going to then even more pronounced now, start to build in some really strong reflections and highlights that are really going to stand out. Now I might just turn it on its side just so it can be a bit more controlled. And we're just doing a variety of lines now, some, some shorter ones, some longer ones, but they're all creating a channel of light. can extend some of this reflection sideways perhaps into our landscape a little bit to get nearer towards the top. Obviously we're going to preference the focal area which is the middle. Scribble it in, join it all together as we go down, further down into the middle area. Then I'm going to change to the yellow colour ninth color on the top row and then in the center these areas we're just going to go for this white or really much brighter color anyway scribble it down then even change to the white why not perhaps not as much for this but we definitely need to see it in there we've got the brightest color in the sun of that white we need to see that in the water too okay i'm going to go to the smudge tool put the smudge on the airbrushing soft brush i'm going to put it to two percent size 50% opacity and well we can just smudge that in a little bit it's a little bit too scruffy in places just think about is it kind of appropriately on either side is it balanced so mush that in a little bit and then zoom back out look at the impact is it working perhaps it needs to be a little bit more over here I mean to be honest we could go to the transform and we could just move it <laughs> And it's quite an easy thing to do. It was over here, so we just move it that way a little bit and then it kind of works better. One of the beauties of working on separate layers is that you can do just that. You can affect each layer independently. And if you remove it, you can see how much of a difference it is making. Okay, so that will do for the majority of the background. We're gonna create some foreground details. So I'm gonna to go to my layers and create a new layer, layer 10. I'm gonna to go to the airbrushing medium brush. I'm going to go to the first color on the bottom row. 
going to put the size at 5% and 100% opacity. I'm going to have a kind of rocky feature here. I mean, one of the reasons that I didn't worry too much about this area is because I knew I was going to obscure it anyway. Create a nice sort of rocky feature here. And then it slopes down, perhaps. Pushes along this area. And then maybe another kind of rocky feature here. Something like this. Just refine that however you want. And then go into go to the second colour, which is a slightly darker colour on the bottom row. And I'm just going to create a section now that is almost like an even closer section. We're on 100% opacity, so you're getting the full impact of this colour. So this bit becomes slightly more distant than this section because it's a slightly lighter tone. And then perhaps with the black colour, third colour, we can just create something that's even closer, just as the bottom section here, like so. Then I'm going to go to that layer, tap on it and put on the alpha lock. And then I can go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, and I can blur that in to maybe about the 15%. I'm going to go to my layers and create a new layer. I'm going to tap on the layer and put on the clipping mask, which means anything I add to this layer now, and I'll show you here. So it stops when we meet the edge of the boundary of the color underneath. So it, I'll show you with a, a bright red color, for example, you can see it stops at the very edge, even though it's on a brand new layer. And we're gonna go in with the Elements Clouds brush once more. We're gonna go with the fourth color on the bottom row. We're gonna have the brush size at maybe 3% and 100% opacity. And just in some of these rocks, of this rocky area, I'm gonna add some texture, just tapping it in. I'm gonna add more of the light on the very edge can have whole sections perhaps like that where it kind of softens in you don't notice it as much and then it can have some shadow areas perhaps that you know you can still add the color but press more lightly we've got it on 100 percent, which is quite dramatic i'm just going to really focus on the kind of top surface and the edges that face towards the sun predominantly you just create some kind of angular shapes i wouldn't worry too much about it it's actually quite fun just to add some shapes into that rock then as we come to this area, I'm going to go for shapes that are just slightly more kind of horizontal almost, like flat rocks, surfaces that run more parallel with the horizontal line. And they call, can all start, start bunching together a little bit. And you see the general effect, but we're going to layer this up with different textures anyway, so it doesn't really need to be overly precise or neat. A series of shapes that kind of cut across this way. Perhaps we'll turn the opacity down from 100 to 60. It can still be quite strong if you press on, but if you press a bit more lightly, you'll get a lighter tone. And like I say, let's just continue to add some of these shapes cutting across sideways. Allow them to be broken so you've got some nice dark colour still poking through. And then obviously we need to have more of this lighter tone near the edge where the light is managing to affect it. Okay, that'll do for that colour. We're going to move along to the fifth colour, turn the size of the brush down to lower on the 2%, and then we'll just be a bit more controlled now. This is the point where we need to start articulating just a little bit more detail. So we're going to add areas of the rock where it's really just lighter in tone. We don't want to do this light colour all over, but certainly some sections. A little bit of variety. Maybe just zoom in and there's just a piece of rock there and another piece of rock. It's just got a different quality to it, a different kind of colour. Just creating more divisions with some of the shapes that you've already created. So go for a block where you've already got, you know, that dark gray blue and just start subdividing it into different textures. What we might do is just skip along to some of the brighter colors and come back to that tone. So I'm going to go for the eighth color and I'm going to start putting that along the very edge. Now remember we've got the clipping mask on so we can't add it to anywhere other than the very edge here and we've obviously got a very strong sunlight so I'm just going to allow it now to start clipping the very edge. And really the effect 
of the stone here is actually a combination between the cool colours and these really strong highlights. This is actually what makes the effect work. Now you don't just want to run a line that completely runs across. You want it more fragmented and broken like I'm showing you. And some of the rocks will stick up more and catch more of that light and other ones will be tucked away a little bit more and a little bit less of it. So try to keep it a little bit more random. And obviously we've got the sunlight in that center, central area so we probably need to do more of the highlights in that region as well. We could turn that down even lower on the 2%, so smaller. And just start to vary the angles up a little bit. Perhaps we could go to the seventh color. And if we look on the color disc, you can see it's a kind of grayed out red orange, which is kind of more of a pink appearance. And you can just vary up the tones that we're creating now. So we've got that nice, really vibrant light color, but then you've got some other interesting colors in the mix as well. And back to our colors, we'll go back even further. We'll go to the sixth color and really we should start having those as well. And you can zoom back out and you can start to see the effect. It really is creating a nice foreground element and it just creates that illusion of distance really quite effectively. We go back to the brightest color or one of them, which is the eighth color. I really liked the impact that had, so I'm gonna do some more of that. We're not gonna do it on every part of the rocks that we've got. For example, here we've got a big rock and I think just that leading edge just a bit of that highlight here and there, I think actually, and keep it fragmented, just a little bit of it here and there goes a long way. And this is gonna be more in the shadow, so we're not gonna have any in there. And then we come into this area where it's quite flat and quite exposed to the sunlight. So we're gonna get a lot more of the nice reflection in this area. Yes, the combination of zooming out to check the effects and zooming in, add it anywhere where you feel it really needs just lifting, zoom back out, assess the impact, zoom in, and just keep doing that. And if you were working more traditionally, typically with a, a canvas, you would stand back in the room, have a look at it, see how it's working, go back in, affect an area, stand back, and it's exactly the same process with zoom. Zoom out, assess the impact, zoom in, continue. You must keep doing that because if you don't, it's easy to lose touch with the overall effect. So you must keep doing that. That would be my strong suggestion anyway. Okay, so even that is quite subtle, but it creates the effect quite effectively, I think. I'm gonna go back in with some other colors. We've got an even brighter color, the ninth color. We could ramp it up even more, just in places, I guess anywhere that's immediately underneath where the sun is, you're gonna get the strongest highlight creeping in. I don't wanna to do too much of that, but just a hint of it, really ramps it up. Like so. And then really, I'm gonna use the last color in the bottom row. I think I need more of this kind of gray color to maybe put it back up into the 2%. And then in these areas, we just need more of the, the kind of stone color really. A little bit stronger might go back to one of the earlier colors so maybe the fifth color i think is a nice color to be going in there with now we haven't got any greenery added to this as such yet so i'm just going to add a few more stone textures and lines and then we'll go and add some kind of hints of plant life so a few more dashes of this a bit more in the shadow area so i'm pressing more lightly for these areas perhaps i'll even go back to the 
fourth colour on the bottom row, which is a slightly more subtle. And keeping it quite fragmented you know there's nothing particularly difficult about what I'm doing it's just the overall effect and that's more to do with the colors and the color placement than it is drawing neat shapes or accurate kind of rock structures they're pretty abstract just blocks not too difficult to execute at all really I'm gonna go for this nice pink purple color which was the seventh color to hint more of this it just varies up the tones that we've got in here i think quite nicely adds a bit more warmth to our scene we've got the sun coming through here so why not just go over that area a little bit add more warmth perhaps we could turn that up five percent size just lightly graze over that area not too much at all okay i'm going to create a new layer and i'm going to go in with the fourth color on the middle row I'm going to go in with a clouds brush at 3% size, 60% opacity, and I'm just going to perhaps just over the edge here create some bushes. Perhaps really I ought to put this underneath layer 10. But now because it's a layer underneath, I can more freely add these bushes in that area. Move over here, I can add one or two over here as well. So even put it up to 6%, add them in really nice and roughly. Then I'm going to go to the organic rainforest brush. I'm going to go to the ninth color on the middle row. 2% size, perhaps even lower on the 2%, maybe even one actually, why not? And about 50% opacity. And then just in and around there, I can add some highlights. We've got the strong sun, so it's impacting the greenery with some highlights too. And again, we can just add them over here. Add them around the edges, this nice highlight color. I'm gonna put the opacity up to 100%, being a little bit timid with the highlights perhaps. So we can really ramp it up, especially when it's nearer the sun. So that's a series of bushes that are just slightly obscured behind the rocks but we can add some things in front now so we'll go to our top layer and create a layer above that layer 13 go in with the fourth color put it up to three percent size 100 percent opacity and well we can create some bushes here now i'm just going to create one here maybe things that stick out up here keep it quite loose quite rough why not things in the foreground we can just really start to add things in and around 3% is quite big it's okay for some of them perhaps you could put it down to 2% in places let's make create some smaller collections of things that are growing if there's any bits of the rock that you're not happy with well we can cover it up at this point with greenery as well which is why I wasn't too worried I knew there was an opportunity to just further add complicate our scene in a way that is you know quite easy anything you don't like with one texture you can cover it up with another one that's sometimes a really useful way of working we're going to go to the fifth color which is a more vibrant color i don't want to add too much of that but add it in the mix anyway i don't want to add too much of this color but just add it a little bit here and there and then again we're going to go for these brighter colors now i've got some pretty warm colors maybe we'll go for the seventh color turn turn it down to one percent just a smattering of that not too much Then we're going to move along to the brighter colors. I'm going to go for the ninth color again. Turn it down, 70% opacity, 1% size. And I'm going to add it as highlights along the edges of some of these bushes now. Bring it down here amongst the rocks. Have to turn it down even further really low on the one percent a 
obviously we're going to have some bits just like we had the rocks in shadow we've got some bits of the bushes perhaps where the sun can't reach it so bear that in mind as well up again two percent especially as we get closer to us it's just easier to have a larger texture size it makes more sense and i'm going to go along to the last color on the middle row it's quite bright we'll put it down to the lowest part of two percent and we can add that in there as well if you put it up 100 percent opacity why not let's just go for it again three percent add it in the foreground quite a nice impact in some places perhaps i'll go in with the red color last color on the top row i'm just going to add just a hint of something growing up here some nice flowers i don't want to do too much of that but just yeah in that strong light it's quite nice to have something that really kind of contrasts with the other things put it up 3% size, just a smattering of it here, not too much, and back down again, 2%, I think it needs just another colour to kind of pop in our scene, I think it brings it all together a little bit more in an interesting way. Tenth colour on the middle row, with the rainforest brush still, 2% size, maybe 80% opacity, and just some even stronger highlights here and there in places, especially as we go kind of distinctly into that sunny area it makes sense but elsewhere too and i'm also going to go for the eighth color bottom row one percent size 80 percent opacity and just continue to add some of these in fact sorry we need to go to the elements clouds brush one percent size 80 percent strength that's what i meant and then yeah continue to add some of these highlights into these rocky areas here just a little bit more but this is the kind of detail you could play around with quite a lot and just get the, the look that you're really going for level of detail and texture bear in mind during these tutorials we try to keep it as relatively condensed as we can i'm not going into the absolute detail that you could do so if you want to spend longer on yours then please be my guest i always enjoy seeing other people's versions especially when they've spent a bit longer on it fine tuning it adding their own little unique elements it's always fascinating to see you can share them with me in the various social media links are down in the video description okay last detail i'm going to create a new layer change the blend mode from normal to add and i'm just going to create some beams of light coming out from the sun so we're going to go in with the 10th color on the top row we'll go to the airbrushing soft brush one percent size five percent opacity or just building some beams of light from here coming outwards from the sun perhaps we'll put it up from the one percent higher up into the two percent just softens it slightly and we just radiate this outwards from the sun Brush size up 3%. And then, yeah, maybe just the ones down here. I want to exaggerate slightly more. I don't want to do too much of that, though. You can get really stylized and exaggerate that, but I don't want to do that too much. Just kind of subtle. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this image here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed watching. Do remember to hit subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, that kind of thing really helps out the channel and I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.